Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So today's video is going to be more of like a get ready with me style video where I just talk about random things. And today's topic on the list is I'm going to be ranting about E3. So for today's get ready with me, we're going to be trying some new makeup. I have the Pastel Dreams from Give Me Glow that I've been sitting on for a hot minute. So we're going to try that out while I <laughs> vent my spleen about E3. Well, not really. I'm I'm fine. I mean, I'm, I wasn't really expecting much, so obviously I was not super let down, but I can definitely understand why people were. And there were a couple things that I definitely was like, meh, about, so we'll just talk about how I feel. So I guess it's like a reaction style video, but like with makeup instead, because why not? I'm using my Dominate Cosmetics primer. I also recently bought the mist. It's half off at Sephora right now, so if it is still in stock, you can get Dominate Cosmetics for half off. This is not sponsored, of course. <laughs> I wish. So I'm gonna... So as I've mentioned before about this primer, I really like it because it starts off as a thick cream, but as you rub it onto your face, it transforms into a watery feeling essence. So it just feels really nice on the skin. And it has a really nice scent to it too. All right, so I am using this Pat McGrath concealer as a foundation because I want something matte and full coverage, but I still don't have a matte or full coverage foundation. So we're just using concealer. I have been looking all over Sephora and Ulta thinking about what kind of foundation would be best for me to get. That's matte and full coverage, but I just haven't. Keep drawing blanks so and maybe it's for the best because I have liquid concealer that I hardly ever use so maybe it's for the best so to start off with I only watched the conferences from Bethesda Microsoft and I also watched Capcom's and then of course I watched Nintendo's and in addition to Nintendo's little direct I also did watch pretty much almost all of their treehouse footage aside from the games I wasn't interested in. So just to kind of tell you that. So I don't really have anything to say on anything else that was shown. I know some other companies were here. So I'm only gonna talk about obviously what I watched and I'll, and I honestly, I like barely watched Capcom, Microsoft, and Bethesda. I kind of just had them on in the background while I like kind of sort of watched. All my friends were all more interested than me in those. I'm, oh, I've, I've historically only ever really played on Nintendo systems and I have a PS4 that I don't use. Sorry, mom. But um, I definitely could like tell, especially like with Bethesda and everything that the energy was just not really there, that they were really struggling to like make use of the digital environment. And obviously um, a lot of them really just didn't have much to show, which is understandable. Personally, the Bethesda and the Microsoft conference was kind of whatever. Um, I'm, I just was watching just to kind of stay up to date on the news. I'm using the Kiko Milano color correcting palette. I only use this for the purple. Honestly, the rest of this is pretty trash. I did appreciate that Capcom kind of like had an introduction in their presentation where they said exactly what games they would be covering. It's not like you were necessarily expecting anymore because they very were very specific about the games that they would be featuring in their um, presentation. So I was watching Capcom a little more attentively, strictly for the Monster Hunter news. Now, I do believe Monster Hunter kind of teased what was coming out for July back when they had their uh, kind of like May June update which had a bunch of new stuff in it a bunch I honestly didn't feel like it was a substantial update and the July update has a lot of people definitely kind of up in arms really upset because most of it is just paid cosmetics and some small event quests but there's nothing like substantial there's nothing new and there's no new monsters I think my biggest gripe with Monster Hunter Rise was just how little content it has overall. I remember some people saying that the development cycle got super screwed over by the panorama, so they weren't able to add all the content in they wanted, and I remember, and when the game first came out, the ending was actually not even finished. Like, they hadn't even released all the Elder Dragon bosses yet, those were going to come in future updates because that's how far behind development went. And they promised that there would be lots of free updates that would finish off the ending so people forgave them at the time, but now that the ending has come out, when they released the final final ending with like the All Mother Narwa. They only released like Valstrax along with it basically and like some Apex monsters. I am using the JX Professional Triple Concealer as usual, no surprise there. And I definitely can understand why people were really upset. But then you also kind of have this interesting debate over like is Monster Hunter a live service title or not? Like should Monster Hunter just be complete when it comes out and we shouldn't be complaining that nothing else comes out besides cosmetics because we just were arguing after the Monster Hunter world was super controversial controversial that Monster Hunter shouldn't be live service so the content that we got with the completed ending is really all we should be asking for and we just sit on it that's the game because we were just saying we don't like the continuous update cycle or anything like that because when Monster Hunter World came out there were lots of updates and there these quests also cycled and like you could like get your login bonus and you were like all 
always connected online, so it played much, it had a much more MMO-like structure, which is more live service-y, and some people, me included, really hated that, and so now we're like suddenly disliking Monster Hunter Rise for not having more updates with more monsters in it, and I guess I can see why some people would think that's hypocritical, but the reason I don't think it is is because Monster Hunter Rise's content is like super, super scant overall. The updates, like when they said that the ending wasn't even complete and that's coming on the updates, the purpose of the updates to finish the ending was to make the game complete what it should have been when it came out and we forgave them because the development got got really hit hard. That the ending is complete, if this is all the content that we have, honestly, I'm definitely kind of disappointed in the game because I'm at the point where I don't really play anymore because I have nothing else to farm. That has never happened to me in any other game. Now, for those of you who are playing Monster Hunter and you're like, oh, well, it's the base game, you do know that the G-Rank thing is like not there. I'm not expecting G-Rank. I'm comparing this game to like Generations and it just feels super bare bones to me. I think even the OG Monster Hunter 4 had more content than Rise did and that's kind of saying something and then some people were defending it like oh but monster hunter world had less content than monster hunter rise but like i don't think we should be using that as the bar because monster hunter world had like nothing i'm currently testing out this banana powder from Too Faced, see if I want to keep it or not. That was kind of my reaction to the Monster Hunter announcement was just like, oh, I'm disappointed. And I wonder if maybe like in August there'll be something, like maybe they'll just switch to every other month now, which would be fine. I don't really mind that too much. But if that's all we got after like the ending plus Valstrax, if that's like all we ever get ever again, I definitely am going to have to say I'm like super disappointed. I am using the Shantikai Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. This packaging does not exist anymore, but they did re-release it in more floral packaging for spring summer and Michelle Wong and Teresa is dead totally made me buy this but in their defense it is every bit as good as they were saying if you see any kind of dryness or peeling on my forehead my forehead has a very 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 big bad dry spot just like right here I exercised this morning and I sweat and then I kind of rubbed my face and like kind of peeled some skin off so you can ignore that it's on the other side of my face as well um, if you kind of see what looks like just really bad dandruff there that is just dry patches on my forehead it'll be covered by my bangs so if you notice it just you can pretend it's not there i am going to use this setting spray to kind of set my makeup and add some refreshing hydration back to my face okay i'm going to move on to my eyebrows really quickly i'm going to use the brow definer i'm going to try and keep my eyebrows a little bit softer today this is in the shade ebony i will say the monster hunter story stuff definitely has me really excited i'm honestly more excited for monster hunter stories than i am for any other game that was talked about at e3 this year so don't judge me i what i was kind of disappointed in was that they're not going to be or there's no new yet of them potentially porting the original Monster Hunter stories to the Switch, but I remember seeing footage of it being ported to the iPad and it ran beautifully on the iPad and it also looked really good too. They were able to just upscale the resolution, so there's no reason it couldn't play on Switch. Like if it can play on iPad, it can totally play on Switch, you know what I mean? And the first game, I don't feel like very many people got to play it because of the console it was on, so all these people have a Switch who don't have a DS and it also didn't perform well on the original 3DS. You had to have the new model for it to even like run past like 15 frame, frames per second so i definitely would feel like that was a total missed opportunity to re to um port this the first one because honestly i would have bought the first one again if they had ported it i would have just paid for it again and like if they had been real cheeky about it and ported it at full price i still would have bought it like that's how good the game was so i feel like they really missed an opportunity to give it a wider audience but what they did show of the second one definitely has me really excited i think monster hunter stories is so super slept on and i hope people play it this time around unspeakably excited for that game. And then they showed some footage at Nintendo Treehouse that was really nice. I honestly prefer the Brow Wiz over the Brow Definer since the Brow Definer has that fatter tip, but considering that I bought this, I'm just trying to use it just to get some use out of it. I did get it half off at 21 Days of Beauty, but still I feel bad having it and just not using it, so. And I, these days, don't really use a spoolie to blend out my eyebrows. I definitely am more of like a brush person. Find I have more fine control over what my eyebrows look like. As usual, I've been really liking this tone active Vader primer from Kaleidos. I didn't powder my eyelids because of this eye primer, so it's still kind of coming out of the tube pretty quickly. So I kind of wish they had been a little more cognizant of like not overpacking the tube, but I know they were just trying to give you a lot of product to work with. Let me know in the comments if it surprised you or if you're not surprised at all. I'm like kind of curious. Like, like, were you expecting me to like video games or were you expecting me to not really be into that hobby? I'm like super curious as to like if that took you guys by surprise or not. All right, so my eyes are primed. So we're gonna be moving into this big beast. I <laughs> I mean, I probably shouldn't have bought this. This is definitely like, I, I waffled and hummed and 
pawed over it for a really long time, but I ultimately caved. So here's what it looks like, but I do own the pastel pup palette as well. So let me hold them up next to each other. They were planned out very differently, How? but you know, pastels are pastels. So I'm kind of holding it back here because this palette is so big. But here you can see there is a little bit of shade overlap. Like there's a pastel yellow, a pastel orange, but the shimmers here are obviously very different. There's only one shimmer in here and then this has the white and the black. So these shimmers are really, really pretty. And because there's so many shimmers in here is why I want to do yellow. I want to do kind of like a rainbow across my eyes. I know, so original. I'm pretty sure like Butte Bean has done this. So many people have done this already. So I'm just going to be joining the train of those people. So I'm going to start working and we're just going to get to it while I continue to rant about E3. So I'm going to start with the orange on my left eye. I know I usually start on my right eye, but I want to go in sequence. So we're going to start on the outer corner. Um, I probably would have benefited from using a lighter colored primer instead of the tone activator primer, but I don't have one that doesn't also dry my eyes out like really badly. So I'm going to drop the light for you guys so you guys can see better what I'm doing and I'll kind of get like closer to the camera I guess. So I'm starting off with Twinkle Twinkle. So that kind of wraps up Capcom for me. Like I said, I barely was listening to Bethesda and Microsoft. I don't honestly really care all that much about what they do. I will say though, I like high key want that Xbox fridge. Like I can't believe they actually memed it. They made an Xbox fridge and I like super want it. I do have it wish I had a mini fridge and a microwave in the kitten room so I didn't have to keep going upstairs and downstairs. Depending on how much it is. If the if the gamer tax is not that high because it's like actually kind of funny. These shadows are really, really powdery so. Definitely work carefully. And I'm actually gonna switch brushes. I'm having trouble working with it and I'm using kind of like a looser synthetic hairbrush. So we're gonna switch over to a dense natural hairbrush. All right, I have the Sonia G Worker Pro. I think this will help a lot. This should definitely be able to hold on to more pigment. Yeah, you can see a really big difference. So this brush definitely picks up the orange and the pastel way better and puts way more of it on my eyelid. So that's really good. So after the Capcom thing and everybody was like freaking out about Monster Hunter, I definitely could tell there were a lot of people who were just like, so at this point Nintendo would win just by showing up and I can definitely feel and relate to that mood. And they showed up pretty well, I would say. I don't really play Smash, but I have some friends who are like total, total Smash fans. So I know they were really excited and honestly, okay. That meme where he's just like, oh. <laughs> It's already being memed online and I'm here for it. It made me laugh so hard all the times he did that. And then he did it to Kirby and that just made me crack up because like, of course, because like we all know Kirby's indestructible. He is Sakurai's son. So like, of course, Kirby would do that. And I just thought it was so funny. And the humor always makes me laugh and Sakurai is such a troll and he's so funny. That was definitely a really great way to open the presentation for sure. Then moving on, kind of just moving through what I remember of the direct because I don't really have the script in front of me or anything. I was kind of surprised that they're making another Super Mario Party game. I have the one they released on Switch, you know, the one with like no content. And I heard some people online saying that they wished it had just been a DLC edition and I can definitely see why they felt that way. However, once I saw that it was basically just like legacy boards, but revamp it in Switch gloriousness and the mini games are remastered and blah 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 so it's kind of like that all-stars mini game game on the 3ds but with the actual boards too once i saw that they kind of had all that involved i could kind of understand more why it was its own game and i mean it's on my buy list i'm gonna get it i have some friends where we really enjoy ruining each other's friendships that way and by playing <laughs> mario party and just being a being silly with each other. It is after all the ultimate friendship destroyer. So I'm gonna really enjoy it, but I definitely can understand people's sentiments about, oh, this should have just been like add-on DLC because the OG game has so little content. Having this come out with the old game just more or less being neglected, I can see how that really rubs it in for some people. And for me too, because I know once this game comes out, my friends aren't really gonna wanna play that other game. Like we're all just gonna wanna play this legacy game, so. And the reason I'm looking at the viewfinders is because I'm just kind of looking at how the shadows are showing up on camera. I don't think I picked a good eyeshadow primer. I'm gonna probably want to revisit this palette with different eyeshadow primers. This performance is not what I expected out of a Give Me Glow palette. This is not my first time using Give Me Glow shadows, so I'm like super surprised that it's not performing well at all. I'm gonna switch brushes again. I'm sw switching to a Sigma brush, so this is gonna be synthetic, but it's like higher quality synthetic. So we're gonna try packing on these shades again and seeing maybe if this is the brush I need to use. I'm having a situation where the initial color was darker, but you can see when I'm putting, laying down more of the exact same orange, it looks white. 
and I don't know what's going on like maybe if the initial layer in the pan is a different color than what I'm getting now but I'm definitely getting just a whole lot of white and if you look really closely you can see a little bit of orange tinge that's all just straight fallout so I feel like it's like stopped adhering to my lid and now it's just all falling down and it's leaving behind this weird white spot and I think it's because the primer is not agreeing with it because see how there's like this whole area of white that is where the primer really was concentrated so I'm gonna try a different primer next time for sure but in the meantime this is all gonna get covered up with shimmer so we can definitely rescue this look so I'm gonna go ahead and focus these matte colors kind of towards my crease where I didn't put any primer like where my finger really diffused the primer out and we're just gonna cover up that disaster with with shimmer I'm gonna continue to play around with this palette and see how it performs using a different eye primer and I will report back to you guys for sure because I this was a very expensive eyeshadow palette and if this is how it performs regardless of the primer I use I'm definitely going to be very disappointed so I'm just bringing it higher up towards my brow bone where there's not any eyeshadow primer so, and honestly, it is like, do you see this white spot up here? This orange is just not wanting to play. And I haven't swatched these shadows. They've only been in contact with eyeshadow brushes. So there's no way the oils should be a problem. So I don't know what's going on here. And then on my finger, this shadow feels terrible. Like swatching it with my finger, that shadow felt really chalky. Well, I'll keep experimenting, but for now, we're just gonna have to salvage the look. Okay, well, we'll move on to the other eye. <laughs> so anyways, where was I? I was saying that I enjoy the Smash memes and I'm kind of salty with Mario Party. Um, I also definitely really enjoyed being able to see a little bit more information on Monster Hunter stories and the fact that they had a whole like 45 minutes of it in Treehouse Live, I was so excited uh, because like the more I watched, the more excited I got and they're releasing the whole first area as a demo. I am totally downloading it the moment it drops and I'm just gonna play it until I can't play it anymore. Like I remember the first time the demo dropped for the original game, I played it so much that I was like way over leveled and over geared for the main game, but I didn't even care because I loved it so much. I was just so happy to be able to play Monster Hunter Stories and I know I will be again. I also saw I also saw a lot of people definitely being really excited for things like Advance Wars finally making a comeback. And I saw some memes about F-Zero fans just like being the skeleton underwater. <laughs> I'm sorry, F-Zero fans. <laughs> I was like, when they first started talking about Metroid Prime 4, I was like, oh no, they're gonna just not talk about it, are they? And sure enough, they didn't. But then they were like, oh, but it's okay. Look, we have Metroid 5 coming out. And I don't play Metroid, but I can definitely appreciate that people do and people love it and that people were heartbroken that there was no Metroid Prime 4 content, especially after they announced that they were basically scrapping the whole thing and restarting. They were like, oh, we don't have it this year, but we have Metroid 5. And like totally people were so excited. And then Advance Wars and the Mario and Rabbids sequel that definitely, it got leaked, but like definitely nobody really saw it coming. And then lastly, the Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity DLC. I've already bought the, um, I already bought the whole bundle of DLC. Like I bought both waves with the discounted price and everything. So I'm just eagerly awaiting it to drop and then I'm just gonna like play it and, and sink another like hundred or so hours into it because I played the OG Hyrule Warriors so much. Like I had all the DLC on the Wii U and then I bought it again when it came out on Switch. I didn't play it as much that time, but I did buy it again because I love the game so much. And then Age of Calamity, I bought that and I just love the idea of making the prequel a Warriors game. I thought that was so smart. So I'm definitely super excited for the DLC. So overall, I was definitely super happy with what I saw and the Treehouse Live gameplay was really great to watch, especially stories. I didn't really tune in for much else besides stories. Everything else I more or less just had playing in the background. But um, I will say though, like, and this is definitely el the elephant in the room. There was no Pokemon. Like I was super surprised that there was no Pokemon. I can't be the only one who wondered where it went, right? Where did all the Pokemon go? I don't know why, but there was none. That was really strange to not have any Pokemon. I'm gonna start working on the lower lash line and I'm just gonna be mimicking on top, on bottom. I wonder if I just might have a dud shade or something, I don't know. But the, like, there was no Pokemon at all. No gameplay, no announcement, no further information being shown. And the Diamond and Pearl remake come out literally this November. So I was really surprised that they didn't show anything. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they have their own Pokemon Direct in July instead and just don't show anything at E3, which kind of means that maybe they thought that their game just couldn't compete with everything else that had to be shown. Oh, I forgot they did reveal that 
Shin Megami Tensei 5 is coming to Switch, and I don't really play Shin Megami Tensei, but I did play Tokyo Mirage Sessions, and I do have Persona 5. So I'm actually thinking of picking up Shin Megami Tensei 5, mostly because the protagonist is like so cute. I am super, super ace, but if I had a sexuality, it would be 2D pretty anime man. Like, that's just, that's what it would be. And I'm not the only one who feels this way for sure. All right, this orange is just so finicky. I don't know what's going on. I'm definitely gonna have to play around with this orange some more, but I, it's kind of not sticking to my lower lash line with the similar kind of behavior. So weird. But yeah, like I went online and I just immediately see memes of like, where's the Pokemon? And everybody's wondering where the hell Pokemon went. And I was kind of wondering too, like I wasn't necessarily upset about it, but I guess I was kind of concerned. You know, maybe I thought maybe they would have another trailer for the Diamond and Pearl remakes just because those are coming out so soon that they would have more information to show, but they didn't. And it just makes me wonder if maybe the remakes are gonna like really just not have anything new, which would be really disappointing. But at this point, like I'm just in such a love-hate relationship with Pokemon, it really wouldn't surprise me if that's what they ended up doing to us. So that was surprising. And then there was nothing about Pokemon Legends Arceus either. I mean, talk about weirdly conspicuously absent for sure. To have no Pokemon just is so strange because that would definitely kind of be the first time that that's happened. And then they, and then the Twitter account said that tomorrow there's gonna be, well, tomorrow when I'm filming, it's definitely already happened by the time this video goes up, but there's a Pokemon Unite announcement. And that definitely set some people off because people were like, oh, we don't care about Unite. Where's our Diamond and Pearl stuff? Where's like the actual information? If you're excited for Pokemon Unite, then I'm excited for you. I personally don't play that genre of game, so I'm not interested. I don't really see the reason to be upset about it. Like there's some people who are like frothing at the mouth over the fact that the game even exists and that I definitely don't understand, but um, definitely not the game for me. So I've just not been following it. Although the skins look pretty sweet, but it definitely just was just so weird. I think that was ultimately just everyone's kind of biggest takeaway from E3 was just wear Pokemon. <laughs> What happened? Well, whether the games have gotten bad or not is definitely a matter of taste and subjective opinion because Sword and Shield were definitely super polarizing. Some people love it, some people hate it. Like some people swear this is the downfall of Game Freak and other people are like, dude, the games are fine, like get over yourself. I didn't appreciate the final product. It didn't feel finished to me, but at the same time I bought it with my money. So like how much can I complain? Okay, so the right eye turned out way better. There's a little bit of patchiness with the purple, but again, maybe this just was the wrong primer. But like, you can see, holy shit, that orange. Not wanting to work with my eye today. It could just be that my eye is dry. This is the evening. Uh, I'm not gonna know, but in the meantime, I'm gonna start putting on these shimmers. So I'm going to start with the pink shimmer and maybe I'll have to like wet the brush or something because this is not really like what I expected the shimmers to be. So I'm just gonna apply these shimmers on with my finger for the time being and you can see that the they perform really well with a finger and I'm just going back and forth between my two shimmer fingers to blend and I'm using that shimmer just kind of all the way up to cover up all that mess on my eyelid and it looks so much better. The shimmers definitely feel super creamy, really nice. I just kind of I wish I could use a brush for these because my finger is getting it all over the place. I'm gonna use my ring finger which has the yellow and we're gonna just blend the two together. My eyelid is looking like now you can still kind of see this white part here, but it's definitely a lot less conspicuous now with the metallics on it. I'm gonna try this Sonya G Mini Sky Brush. This is the flat definer, and we're gonna start working on the other eye. So I'm gonna take two high for this, which is that mint. I think I know what they're referring to. <laughs> so yeah, overall, I don't know, definitely one of the more boring E3s. I know a lot of people were like super, super disappointed, and there's definitely more than their fair share of people who are just like absolutely raging about it. And I mean, it didn't really live up to my expectations either. I do hope it goes back to being in person, but I don't know because, you know, Sony completely pieced out of it, and I think if E3 had gone on, on last year, they would have pieced out of that too. It seems like Sony just is just completely, see ya, we're not doing E3 anymore. And Sony leaving definitely kind of, I'm not really a Sony person, but you can definitely see the Sony shaped hole left behind without them being there. They're kind of like one of the biggest anchors of E3. I mean, it would be like, imagine if Nintendo just like pieced out of E3, it would be really strange. And lastly, I'm taking Lavender Sky on the outer corner. So I feel like I almost sometimes wonder if Sony backing out of E3 is kind of just indicative of just the way the gaming industry is going, that E3 is just not what it used to be, and that maybe one of these days E3 will just not be worth any company attending anymore. And everyone's just gonna do their own thing from now on. Because Nintendo definitely does streams of directs throughout the year, so there's no need for them to come to E3 if they just did their own Nintendo Direct, as long as the view count really changes. I am gonna very quickly add a highlight underneath my lash line, and I'm gonna go ahead and just use a normal highlighter 
I don't want it to be too crazy under here since the eyes are already pretty crazy. I think some eyeliner is going to help, so I'm going to put on mascara. I'm not using lashes. It's pastel, so it's not really like it really needs lashes. I demoed the Refer Lash Curler, and I do really, really like it. I am going to use it to curl my top lashes. As I said in that video, it doesn't really work for my bottom lashes, but it works just fine for my tops, and it actually makes my tops look really pretty. I need to like keep a hair dryer down here and start getting into the habit of like warming up my lash curler to speed it up. That's the only thing is that it always takes me like forever. So you can kind of already see my lashes are peeking up at the world. I've only used new lash like five days now so far, so obviously I can't really talk about if it's working or not. <laughs> like if it gives me Mel Thompson's lashes, I'll eat my foot. Using the Clio Kill Lash Mascara. I don't actually really like it that much. I'm really just using it up because I need to and I have it and I don't really have any other waterproof mascara right now that works as well, so. I mean, if you like your mascara to look like you don't have mascara on and you just have naturally long, nice lashes, then this will definitely fit your bill. But if you want more dramatic lashes like me like you want like better than sex level of lashes then this is not gonna give you that this is what my lashes are looking like they show up so can't complain using the miniature Monsieur Big mascara from Lancome once it's like two months old is when it kind of peaks until then it looks okay And then I do kind of like to take it and kind of just push it against the roots of my lashes, of my upper lashes once they've dried. And the curl's been set, I'll kind of like push it up against the roots to like add some volume. And that just makes the bottoms of my lashes look thicker without dragging my whole lash down, basically. I am using an ancient Urban Decay perversion liner. We will see if the point doesn't break off. And I'm just gonna like add a little bit of definition to the outer corner. I think it just could use some because the pastel look is definitely super like one dimensional. But just a little bit on the outer corner make my eyes look better. Do you kind of see the difference between this eye and that eye with just a little bit on the corner? My eyelids are super wrinkly right now. I guess to put it in Teresa's dead words, it's like wrinkly ball sack eyelids. This eyeliner is kind of slowly begin to dry out, which makes sense because this is literally like a two-year-old pencil. And you can see it used to be full-sized, but I did use it down about halfway. I had a good life. We're gonna pair the pink with this orange right here, and we're gonna kind of create a watercolor effect. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply this one more widely. It's lighter in color, so it's gonna just kind of be like my base blush. A very pretty orange shade. It develops, the color development of this blush is super pretty. Like, it looks really chalky in the pan looks really light and chalky, but on the face it actually has a really pretty kind of intensity to it. I am a clown and I did pre-order the Diamond and Pearl dual pack. Pokemon's the first ever video game I ever played and video games definitely were like a huge escape for me back in high school and college. It's just, I just will always have, even the worst Pokemon game, I will always find a way to still ultimately enjoy it. So you can judge me, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going in with Sugarberry now and this shade is a lot more pigmented than the Dior one. So, and I'm gonna kind of apply this in a much more concentrated region. So it's almost like the pink color is blooming out into the orange color and I'm placing it pretty high on my face And you can see how those two colors will layer up definitely pretty intense on the blush But you guys know I always love blush I don't think anybody who watches more than one of my videos is surprised to see my cheeks just looking absolutely red I'm gonna just tone that down a little bit with a little more orange. I am going to add a little bit of bronzer I feel like I could benefit from some and because my blush has a bit of a sheen to it thanks to the Dior blush I'm gonna go in with my Clinique flower bronzer. This is a baked formula so it'll look really nice on my skin. And I'm just gonna focus this back here. I'm not gonna bronze my forehead because of those dry patches. They would look really bad. And I'm just focusing this on the outer part of my face. I also need to put highlighter on. I am using the Clio Gold Sheer. This is just a really great all-purpose highlighter. I have so many highlighters, but ultimately I just find myself using this because I like suffer from analysis paralysis and I'm like, yeah, I just use the gold sheer. Just a very simple universal color and it's not overpowering, so if I accidentally load up the brush too much, it's not gonna show up as like a brilliant stripe on my cheek. I'm gonna be using the Etude House lip liner today just because that's what I grabbed first. 
I thought about maybe streaming putting on makeup live. I don't know. But I don't know if I would stream that on YouTube or if I would stream that on Twitch. I'm not so sure. I'm gonna use this Unleashia tint. I have raved about these, so I wanted to use it again on camera. I do use makeup off camera. Not like I don't wear makeup every day or anything, but I do use makeup off camera. So. And I do really like these. I, I wasn't lying. These are really good. I have two colors. I have one that's pinkier and one that's redder, and I accidentally picked up the redder one, but honestly, I think it'll work just fine. I swear I have like five red shirts. I'm not wearing the same red shirt over and over again, I promise. But this is the finished look. Just a very cute, sweet rainbow. Definitely appropriate given the timing. I do plan on making an ace-themed makeup look that'll go up hopefully before the end of June. And I won't be like totally belated with my contribution to Pride Month. I mean, we'll see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this get ready with me. I am definitely gonna have to update you guys. I do plan on making like a, maybe in July, I'll upload a what I've been using kind of for the past six months to a year, what I've personally gravitated to the most. But other than that, this is gonna be a pretty long video, so I'm not gonna talk any longer. I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed the look. I hope you guys enjoyed my opinions and my thoughts on E3. Let me know if you have anything you want to contribute and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!